try to write down everything you can about this object. Well, we're going to think about the two components separately. The key word is separately. Horizontally, we're moving to the right. And since our horizontal acceleration is parallel to our horizontal velocity, we're speeding up horizontally. Our horizontal speed is increasing. Our horizontal speed is increasing. We're speeding up horizontally. Now, how about vertically? Vertically, the velocity is down, so we're moving down. But what does it mean if the vertical acceleration is zero? Well, if you've really done a good job of going through the previous series of videos, that should be straightforward for you. Um, we know that if the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, we're speeding up. If the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, we're slowing down. So if the acceleration is zero, we must be neither speeding up nor slowing down. How can you be neither speeding up nor slowing down? Only if you're going at constant speed. So our vertical speed here must be constant. Constant vertical speed. Again, this is very important to understand if you haven't yet mastered this idea. Very important not just for kinematics, but for the whole course. When the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, we know you're speeding up. When the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, we know you're slowing down. So if the acceleration is zero, you must be neither speeding up nor slowing down. When the acceleration is zero, you must be going at constant speed. When your acceleration is parallel to the velocity, your speed is increasing. When your acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, your speed is decreasing. So when the acceleration is zero, the speed is neither increasing nor decreasing. The speed is constant. Please make sure that you're very comfortable with how to interpret a zero acceleration. Um, so notice that when the acceleration is zero, it doesn't mean you're not moving. The acceleration doesn't tell you how you're moving. That's what the velocity does. The acceleration just tells you how the velocity is changing. Well, here the vertical acceleration is zero, so the vertical velocity is not changing. Constant speed. Not changing means constant. Please pause the video and write down everything you can about this object. The key word is separately. We have to think about the horizontal and vertical components separately. Horizontally, the velocity tells us that we're moving right. And we just reviewed that when the acceleration is zero, you're moving at constant speed. The velocity is not changing. So we have a constant horizontal speed. That's what zero acceleration means. Remember that when the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, your speed is increasing. When the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, your speed is decreasing. So if there's no acceleration at all, your speed must be constant. That's the only possibility that's left. Now vertically, uh, the velocity is pointing up, so we're moving up. And in this case, the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, so we're slowing down, decreasing vertical speed. Our vertical speed is decreasing because the vertical acceleration is anti-parallel to the vertical velocity. But our horizontal speed is constant um, because our horizontal acceleration is zero. So here's all the information that we can um, obtain about the movement of this object. Let's try to use the same techniques to figure out everything that we can about this object. Now this problem is obviously a little bit different um, so don't get frustrated if you get a little bit stuck. If you, get a little bit, if you get stuck, you can just proceed with the video, but try to give this a shot at first. Try to see how, if you can analyze this using somewhat similar techniques to what we've already seen. Well, clearly here we're dealing with two-dimensional motion, and we know that our trick for two-dimensional motion is to just um, think separately about the horizontal and vertical components. We've seen that if we just think separately about the horizontal and vertical components, the two-dimensional problem just becomes two separate one-dimensional problems. So our trick is to think separately about the horizontal and vertical components. Now, the reason why this problem is a little trickier than what we saw before is that in this problem, I haven't told you what the horizontal and vertical components are. 
If you, if you flip back to the previous questions that we just finished, you'll see that in all the previous questions, I told you straight out what the horizontal and the vertical components were. But here I haven't told you what the horizontal and the vertical components are. Well then, we still need the horizontal and vertical components. So the first thing that you should have done was figure out what are the horizontal and vertical components. If you're not given the horizontal and vertical components, you have to figure them out on your own. All right, so here's a technique we haven't talked about previously in these videos. How can we break these vectors down into components? All right, now I'm hoping that most of the people who are watching these videos, I'm expecting that most of you have already been exposed a little bit to the material in the first few weeks of physics. You're coming to these videos because you're having trouble with material that you've already seen. So I'm kind of hoping that you've already been exposed to the idea of components and breaking vectors down into components. Um, if you've never even heard of breaking a vector into components before, then what I'm going to talk about, I might be going a little bit too fast for you. But as long as you've already seen a, seen a couple of examples of breaking vectors into components, I think that um, what I'm going to be doing here is going to make sense to you. All right, so we need to break this uh, velocity vector into horizontal and vertical components. Well, the trick is we need to draw a right triangle which has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. We need to draw a right triangle which has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. So here's how we would do that in this case. So here we have a right triangle, um, and you can see that this right triangle does have the overall vector as its hypotenuse. That's the first step for breaking things into components. Draw a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. All right, so we've done that. Uh, and now this horizontal line here can be V sub x, the horizontal velocity. And this vertical line can be V sub y, the vertical velocity. So you can see the trick. We draw a right triangle um, that has the overall vector as its um, hypotenuse um, and that has a horizontal leg and a vertical leg. And those are going to be the components. Now there's something else that's very important here, which is that we have to draw arrows on both of the legs to show which way they're pointing. These are representing vector components, so we have to put arrows on them to show which way they're pointing. Uh, for example, which way should this horizontal component be pointing, left or right? Well, which way was the overall vector pointing? Was the overall vector pointing to the right or to the left? I think you can see that the overall vector here was pointing to the right. It was also pointing up, but we're not going to think about that. We want to think about horizontal and vertical separately. If you just think of it horizontally, clearly this overall vector was not pointing to the left. It was pointing to the right. So it's important to put an arrow here to show that this horizontal leg is actually pointing to the right. And how about vertically? Um, should the vertical leg be pointing up or down? Well, which way was the overall vector pointing? Well, I think you can see that the overall vector was pointing up. Not straight up, but kind of up. So we need to put an arrow here showing that our vertical leg is pointing up. All right, so now we have the x components and the y components of the velocity. All right, now we have to try to do the same thing for the acceleration. Uh, maybe now might be a good time to pause the video, and if you weren't able to do it before, maybe now that I've given you an example, you can draw the components of this acceleration vector. So maybe you should pause the video and give that a shot. Okay, well remember the trick is we have to draw a right triangle that uses this overall vector as the hypotenuse. So I'm going to draw a right triangle that has the overall vector as the hypotenuse. And then this vertical line would be a sub y, and the horizontal line would be a sub x, because we're going to stick with a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. Now this is not sufficient, because now we have to put arrows on the legs. Which way should the x-axis be pointing, right or left? Well, which way was the overall vector pointing? Was the overall vector pointing right or left? I think you can see that this arrow is kind of pointing to the right. It's not pointing straight right, but it's definitely not pointing to the left. It's pointing to the right. So, our horizontal component here should be pointing to the right. And how about the vertical component? Well, I think you can see that the uh, overall vector was kind of pointing down. The overall vector was pointing down, so the y component should be pointing down. It's crucial to put these arrows on the components. If you don't put the arrows on the components, um, you're going to be in trouble. So get in the, into the habit of putting those arrows on the uh, components. Uh, let me tell you why it's so important. 
Um, uh, by this point, you should know that it's crucial to be paranoid about getting the signs right. We always have to pay very close attention to the signs. Um, but in order to know what the sign of a component is, you have to um, know what direction it's pointing in. If we don't know what direction the component is pointing in, we don't know whether it's pointing in the positive or the negative direction. So just like we're always very anxious to get the signs right, we have to be very anxious to get the arrows right so we know what the signs will be.